Hi guys, today I'm going to be sharing with you Isabella's five month old routine and schedule and I thought I would show you her now because she's about to have her bottle so she's going to be down here on my lap um, but I thought I'd sneak her into this video quickly. She is very active at the moment, she just wants to get up and go so I'm hoping she'll stay nice and quiet for me to film this video and it's one of the things that I google the most, baby's routines and schedules and it's, I think it's kind of every parent's desperate attempt to get some sort of life back when your baby is in a schedule or a routine, it kind of makes life a little bit easier. I'm all for routine and schedules but I have to admit I've been a little bit more relaxed with Isabella than I was with James and it kind of works out well for our family. I think if I were on a strict routine with her things would not go down well, I would be permanently stressed. Um, so yeah, I have kind of like an ideal routine that I try to stick to and most days it works, but sometimes it doesn't and if it doesn't, it's not the end of the world. Obviously you guys know by now watching all these mummy videos that none of us know what we're doing. We're all doing what we think is best for our kids and we're trying to take inspiration from other mums and just do our best really. So. This is um, a routine for a five month old baby who is mix fed, so she's breastfed and bottle fed and she's also recently just started weaning so I've included the time that I give her solid foods in the schedule as well. And before I start the video I just wanted to let you guys know that Channel Mum has done a whole series of baby development videos which are simply brilliant and I wish these were around when I had James as a first time mum because I was obsessed with apps and things and websites looking at development and what to expect from my baby. It's so much more intuitive to watch a video on your baby's development rather than just read like a generic article because on the videos you get to see lots of mums talking about how their babies have are, are developing and these are approved by health visitors and made in conjunction with health, health visitor so you know you can trust them. So if you fancy watching them, if you have a new baby and you want to know everything about their development, there's a video for every single month of your baby's life up until 12 months old and I think the, for the first month they have one week, two weeks, three weeks and four week old uh, development videos. I'll leave a link in the description box below for you to check it out. So let me get her sorted and we'll get started. Right, so she's down here having her bottle and I've got my notes on my phone to help me through this video. So, let's start with awake time. So Isabella usually wakes up at half past six, give or take, everything here give or take about an hour, but it's usually half past six that she wakes for the day. And before I had kids, I used to think like, if they are still feeding through the night, how do you know when they are awake for the day? But you do know because they just will not doze off or go back to sleep. They are ready and their eyes are wide open and they don't want to be in the bedroom anymore. It's like they've had enough of being in the bedroom. So at half past six, she's at the end of her tether and I cannot sneak in any more five minutes of sleep. So I have to get her downstairs. And also I do that because I don't want to wake James up. James is Isabella's big brother who is two and... Um, he sleeps in until a little bit later than half past six, so if I keep her upstairs, she's so loud and she's gonna wake him up. So I just bring her downstairs with me. And um, because she still feeds, feeds through the night, which is something that you'll see later on in the, um, in the routine, uh, she gets plenty of milk in the night. This girl breastfeeds all night long, so when she wakes, I'm not that desperate to immediately feed her a bottle. With my first, as soon as he woke up, he had a bottle in his mouth because I worried that he was going to be starving from you know all night long sleeping and all that but with her because I know she's feeding in the night I know she's getting milk so I'm not that sort of quick to go and feed her so we come downstairs I make myself a coffee make myself some cereal try and, and grab some breakfast whilst I can change her nappy catch up on some YouTube have a little play around the floor with her and usually just try and delay the morning feed for a little bit longer so then I go and make her a bottle and she has the first bottle at around about half past seven and she used to fall asleep having a bottle and sometimes if she's really tired she still will but nowadays it's a little bit less common for her to fall asleep whilst having milk which makes it harder to settle her to sleep um, so she has a bottle at half seven and she is a real snacker she will have bits and bobs and a little bit here and then she'll stop and play and then have a little bit more so um, it's a bit harder to keep track of whether or not she's finishing that bottle or am I 
gonna have to make her a fresh bottle because she's taking so long to finish it but if she has the bottle within an hour of me making it then I'll still feed it to her so at around about let me have a look half past eight I put her down for a nap and this is her first nap of the day and it's usually the longest nap so she naps from half past eight to half past nine and uh, yes yeah, so she'll nap for a good hour and first first thing in the morning so then when she wakes at half nine her big brother will be awake by that point so everybody has some playtime um, down here and it's just a very fast-paced household you know we're just running around doing things all the time I work from home so I'm trying to sneak in some work at the same time as giving the kids breakfast and getting them sorted being the second baby she's learned that she needs to be a little bit more independent in that she if she loses a toy she's gonna have to find a way to get it if she wants it quickly um, so that's been quite different to me because I've always been kind of a very hands-on you know help you every step of the way mum with James if he lost a toy I'd be right there to give his toy back and that's not always a good thing but you know it made him feel like someone was always there but with her I'm not always there like immediately when she she needs me because I might be with James or I might be doing other things so she's kind of learned to be a little bit more independent which is good um, yeah so we're talking about you so what's next I try to put her down for a nap two hours after she wakes from a nap and I also try to give her a bottle every four hours so that's kind of the schedule that I try to stick to I'm so sorry if the light keeps changing I'm using natural light and the Sun is out so it make it's making things either too bright or too dark but I'm just gonna carry on and hope for the best so lunchtime so she's having her lunchtime solid foods at about half past 11 and she's only just started so at the beginning of weaning at least this is how we do it I start with one meal a day and her meal is lunchtime so that's what she has at half past 11 and she also has a little drink of water and at 12 o'clock she has her second bottle of the day and she will usually fall asleep having that bottle so she'll go down for a nap at around about quarter past 12 and then sleep until about 20 to 1 and that's when we all start to get ready to go out because if we're going out that day obviously if not then things just carry on as normal but if we're going out that's the best time to go out for us because my son James he's happier when he's got his tummy full and it's not the end of the day still so midday after he's had his lunch after Isabella's had her nap is the best time for us to head out somewhere and for us all to be happy and content so that's when we would go out if we do go out around Around about one o'clock so then she'll have another nap at around about three o'clock so if we're still out she'll nap in her car seat or in her buggy if we're back home then I'll put her in her crib or in her cot upstairs so she'll nap for about 40 minutes she is a real cat napper as well she won't have like really long naps but she is getting better as the months go by so sort of around about three to four months old she used to have 15 to 20 minute naps now she's getting more into 30 minutes and 40 minutes 45 minute naps so then the next thing is you have a bottle at four o'clock and then it's the struggle to make it through until bath time at five o'clock because both my kids are exhausted by bath time at five so they are a little bit grizzlier than usual around about four to five o'clock so they have a bath five o'clock both of them and then at six o'clock she has another nap and I would love for this to be her bedtime like her actual going down to sleep and not waking up until at least 11 o'clock um, but she does tend to think that this is a nap and even though my son has an early bedtime as well because he's dropped his naps he, he doesn't nap in the day anymore so he's shattered by 6 p.m. she goes down at 6 but she wakes up about half an hour after thinking that she's had a nap but I've done something recently that's changed this habit of hers so she goes down at 6 she wakes up at half past 6 I give her a bottle straight away sort of half past 6 you know 6 40 I give her a bottle and she will kind of like have a top-up feed and feel still a little, little bit drowsy I try not to interact with her too much because I don't want to put her down on the floor to play and crawl because you'll think really is playtime when in an actual fact I want her to be staying asleep so if I'm lucky when she's having that half past six bottle she'll go straight back to sleep and I'll put her down again and she'll stay asleep 
If not, and that happens sometimes, if she's still awake after the bottle or if she doesn't want to drink the bottle, then I just walk her around a little bit, give her a cuddle and then I put her back down in the crib and kind of rub her back and try to sing to her without picking her up or doing too much, like looking, I don't look her in the eye, that is the death of bedtime. If I catch her eye, that is it. I don't know why, I don't know if anyone's babies do that, but my children if I catch if I look them in the eye when I'm trying to put them to sleep it's ruined <laughs> so I don't look her in the eye I just kind of reassure her that I'm still there she doesn't really cry she sometimes she moans a little bit just kind of like just baby moan but she doesn't really cry and um, yeah she finally settles back to sleep by me rubbing her back sometimes I have to pick her up and walk her around but recently she's been going down quite well to sleep like that just by having like a muslin near her face to smell and me rubbing her back so yeah if all goes well she goes back to sleep at around about seven to half past seven and it's at that point that she has a longer stretch of sleep but I've cut down feeding her to sleep because I uh, realized that I was actually giving her more interaction and keeping her more awake by picking her up giving her a bottle or a breastfeed to try and get her back to sleep and it wasn't working so I've cut those feeds out of her our routine and I'll only give her a bottle then at around about 11 o'clock if I can't get her to sleep any other way and then um, yeah so if she's still asleep at 11 I leave her asleep until she wakes but usually she wakes up 11 to midnight and she has a bottle or a breastfeed and then I try to get her back to sleep but usually that's when our cluster feeding starts so Isabella's not very good at settling in the night without feeding and I get worried that I'm gonna wake James up if I don't give her a feed and try to get her to settle in any other way so I've been doing the unthinkable and I've been feeding her to sleep and she stays latched on all night long which is not ideal but that's the next thing that we're gonna tackle so yeah from 11 o'clock until about half past six I am hopping from one side to the next of the bed feeding her on both sides so I don't bottle feed her in the night because it's just more convenient for me to breastfeed and it's the only time that I consistently breastfeed her at the moment and yeah that's what we do I will try my best to cut down the cluster feed in the night and only have set times where I feed her so that is our routine for Isabella at five months old she's gonna be six months in a few days and if you guys would like to see a six month old routine sort of when we've settled more into her sixth month then let me know in the comments below if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you have friends that have babies and who are struggling to get their babies into a routine then maybe show them this video that they might take something out of it that might might help them I can't tell you how many times I've taken things out of videos and articles that have helped me immensely especially as a first-time mum I used to take out like random schedules and routines off the internet and try and follow it and adapt it to our needs and our lives and it has been really helpful to me so I would love to be able to help other mums out there and if you're not subscribed already make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss our future videos and I will see you in my next video bye say bye bye say bye bye yay <laughs>